Summertime is here, and many people will be taking to the water for fun in the sun. While it's great to enjoy the outdoors, it's also important to protect yourself and your family from summer safety issues, including heat stroke, skin cancer, dehydration, and drowning. Louisiana ranks in the top 10 states with the most incidences of drowning, which is a leading cause of death for children ages 1 through 5. Drowning is also the second leading cause of unintentional injury-related deaths of children ages 1 through 14. Making water safety a priority, TGMC wants to educate the public on the importance of water safety and also recognizing June is National Safety Month, Dr. Owen Grossman, Emergency Department Medical Director, is here to share tips on how to keep yourself and your family safe this summer. Good evening and welcome to To Your Health with TGMC. I am your host, Keith Weissack. Thank you for joining us. Uh, very glad to have Dr. Grossman here with us. Thank you again for joining us. Well, thank you, Keith, for inviting me. Yes, sir. Uh, talking about swimming and boating, some popular summer activities, especially in South Louisiana. Are there some risks associated with that and with the water? Well, yes, um, of course. I mean, if you're boating, there's a risk of a boating accident. So just common sense, you should have a personal flotation device. And Really, it would be good if you if you could wear it at all times. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. but at least to have you be sure to have that personal flotation device in the boat readily available, and especially children right. who might not be able to get to it quickly. And remember, on the water, especially in a powered boat, alcohol and boating don't mix. Most boating accidents are associated with alcohol. A moment's inactivity, the boat hits an object, and people get thrown overboard. And without that PFD, they're at high risk of drowning. And then, of course, there's the injury from the impact. But certainly a personal flotation device when you're on a boat in the water. Very and no alcohol when you're in a boat. Have the, have the flotation device, don't have the alcohol. Right. Okay. Save the good. alcohol for when you're at home. You don't have to drink and drive or boat and drive. Very good. Uh, some types of locations or activities, uh, or what types of locations or activities, increase children's risk for drowning? Well, the pool. I right. mean, it, the pool's an attractive place. A child unattended in a pool or a moment's inattention and accidental drowning is the leading is not the leading cause. Tra vehicular deaths are the leading cause. Right. But second to vehicular deaths, drowning deaths are the leading cause of unintentional injury to children. Um, this 27. Uh, it's it's 27 percent of all unintentional injury deaths are from drowning in the young age group. Wow. So uh, the pool is a great place to enjoy the summertime, but never leave your child unattended. You should be within arm's length of your child at all times. I remember. We were at a pool party on the 4th of July, and my daughter, who is three years old, sees the pool, walks into it, jumps in the pool, and promptly goes down to the bottom. And fortunately, one of our friends who was a lifeguard immediately reacted, jumped in, and brought her up to the top. Had that not happened, my daughter could have been a drowning victim. Wow, and that's arm lengths away. Arm safety. lengths so you can grab your child and bring them to the bring top. Them to safety. And I think we have something on the screen here that we can talk about maybe some of the signals of drowning. How do we let people know when someone well, may be drowning? Well, obviously, if the child's head is down in the water, their mouth level, they're not moving, or if the head is tilted back, their mouth is open, they're not focusing, they're basically in the, in the pool, immobile, not, not moving, eyes are closed, hair, hair is over the forehead. So obviously something, your common sense says they're not, they're not moving, they're not mm -hmm. using their legs, or they might be gasping, or they're trying to swim but they're not making any particular direction, or they're trying to roll in the back, or obviously if they've sunk to the bottom to the bottom. So just some very simple things, very logical if yeah. somebody's... If, if the child looks like the child's in trouble, the child is in trouble. Yeah. They're not moving, they're in trouble. Right. And they never assume that, that they're just playing. Right. Always go and address that. Uh, is, is there such, as a, such a thing as a dry drowning or a secondary drowning? Well, a dry drowning would be if water gets it in the larynx and the child has laryngospasm and then it's not breathing and then they're not exchanging air. Okay. That would be considered a dry drowning. A wet drowning is when water gets into the lungs. The end result is going to be the same. There's going to be a lack of oxygen to the brain, asphyxia. Okay. And so that secondary drowning is also related to that dry drowning, yes. right? Yes. Then, then as they, they relax, water will get into the lung. And then they get hypoxic, and the lung can undergo some lung injury. Even if a child is brought up and resuscitated, there's a danger of secondary lung injury occurring many hours later. So this child is going to have to be monitored for a while. And these can go on to be quite serious injuries. Okay. So we don't want the initial impact, we don't want the initial injury to occur in the first place. Right. But getting water into the lung, then the lung undergoes reaction and they can get, uh, you know, into, into respiratory distress. Maybe not immediately, but maybe later. So if you're worried about them, if your child is a victim of drowning or looks like they're a victim of drowning, call 911. Don't waste any time. 
um, and getting a CPR course, you know, from your local YMCA or other CPR provider would be a very handy thing to have. Very helpful. Okay. Uh, and so, can and, and I don't know if you addressed the symptoms of the dry drowning. Can we talk about maybe what those symptoms of the dry or the secondary may be that well, people can recognize? Be, they're going to have breathing difficulty. They're going to be gasping, it, okay. you know, some sort of respiratory distress, respiratory difficulty. Okay. And uh, how, do the, how do you treat those secondary dry drownings? What do well, you do? Well, it's going to be supportive care. The child's okay. going to you know, need, uh, it, depending on the severity, possibly supplemental oxygen possibly even having to be intubated. If, if there's any concern, the child might end up being ending up in a pediatric intensive care unit, being monitored and having their lungs taken care of by a pediatric intensivist or pulmonary specialist. And so just because they maybe have a near drowning or, or an issue, it's important to call 911, let the paramedics assess, and see if they need to get to the emergency room. And have them assessed. And the immediate symptoms, if the child aspirated some water, or had a near drowning episode might not be apparent for several hours, so they're going to need to be observed because those lung changes might not occur initially. Now, obviously, if it's a very severe near drowning event where the child is anoxic, that's going to be much different. There's going to be a lot of obvious motor inactivity and change in their child's neurologic inter interaction function. Okay. Uh, but so there's there's the immediate, obviously very serious ones, and then there could be delayed lung injury from water getting in the lung tissue. And I think you've kind of addressed what can happen if we don't get these things addressed. You've, you've kind of mentioned Well, that. Over, over several hours with a near drowning, the child's respiratory status can deteriorate and they can end up very hypoxic. That's low oxygen state. Right. And that can cause further injury to the lung and to the child's brain and other organ systems. Okay, very good. Dr. Grossman, some wonderful information about drownings and about how to prevent them. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more when we come back from the short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Hospital. What's wrong? I'm going to spin class. <laughs> class? Not just like that, she's not. Since when did they have class at a hospital? Is Rachel in some sort of trouble? I'm late. I knew it. Oh, baby! Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. With our Healthy Lifestyle Center, Terrebonne General Medical Center is revolutionizing the community's approach to health care. TGMC, a new way of health. And welcome back to the program again to Your Health with TGMC, joined by Dr. Grossman, uh, Emergency Room Director. Dr. Grossman, we're talking about drownings. Uh, what should you do if your child is experiencing a drowning emergency? What do you do first? Well, obviously, you want to get the child out of the water. You want to check to see if the child is responsive. If you're trained in CPR, go through the steps, check for responsiveness. And if not, then start CPR. But the most important thing would be send someone to call 911. If your cell phone is with you, activate it, call 911 ask for emergency medicine help right away. As soon as possible, the better. Okay, always always that timeliness makes yeah. a huge difference. Call for help, get 911. Very you good. Know. And uh, if, you don't ha if you haven't taken a CPR course, I'd encourage everybody to take a CPR course it's at the, the local YMCA or contact TGMC and they can about help. community CPR. Yeah, you know, it's the beginning of the summer. Now is the time to, if you don't know CPR and you're gonna be around the water, you should. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how can drowning and water emergencies be prevented? I think we have a list here to well, let people know at home. Well, the pool's an attractive thing for children. So, obviously, if you have a backyard pool, you need to make sure that it's a safe environment and that neighborhood children don't go wandering into the pool unattended. So, a safety fence around the pool. If it's a back in your house, then the side of the house can act, so a three-sided fence. But a fence with a secure latching system. Uh, if it's unattended, you don't want to leave toys floating in the pool that a child can be attracted to and then see it, sees his toy, goes into the water after his toy. So you need to have adult supervision. So if you have windows or doors that open to your pool, make sure they're either alarmed or locked so the child can't accidentally get out while you're inside the house and you're distracted. When you're at the pool party, someone should be designated to pay attention and stay at arm's length of the children. And the little plastic floaty arm things, they're not a substitute for a true personal flotation device for your child. Okay. Swimming lessons for children of the appropriate age to teach people to swim. That's, a, that's also an important thing. It sounds common sense, but if you're in the water and you can't swim, you're at risk of drowning. So learn how to swim. And then make sure resting and getting out of the water is the other thing, because you, if you're too tired, you can't help somebody else. And be else. careful how much alcohol is consumed when you're at a pool party or in the boat. Yeah. But alcohol and water just don't mix. 
together, whether well, you're in a boat or you're in a pool. You can relax, but make sure you're in a safe environment. Right. Gotcha. Uh, what are some tips now for children and adults to be aware of for water safety? What are some tips for that? Well, again, it's it's a matter of, you know, is, is there a res responsible person around there? Um, the, the concept that the personal flotation device is, is, is that it's not a toy, is not a flotation toy, is not a substitute for a PFD. Um, the concept of arm's length, mm -hmm. you know, just, just common sense. And it's a really big thing to keep those attractive toys because yeah. one of those things is those big blow up toys, kids see that and they want to immediately jump in. So when you're done, clear the pool. Uh, and so what emergency services does TGMC provide to the community? What does TGMC have available for the well, community? The emergency department is, is there um, it, in our community. We have the, the, we split into two tracks, a fast track for low acuity cases in the main emergency department. And then of course within TGMC, our specialty area is cardiac events. Um, we're linked with Ochsner for stroke events, but we're, we're equipped to take care of all emergencies in all ages. Yeah, and I think you've answered this next question about the emergency treatment, what it's like. You guys have a tier system about getting people through more quickly well, as people, needed. People, when they arrive, will be triaged based on their acuity, based on their what we call vital signs, their breathing rate, their oxygenation, the mechanism of injury, how active or inactive they are. Obviously, if a person is in distress, they're brought back immediately and an immediate resuscitation has begun. Yeah, and that's done by a very specifically trained RN to triage. The RNs right? have a specific training in triage protocols and triage assessment. All right. And, and that's basically the definition of triage is assessing the severity of the condition. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, and so what is the best way to maintain water safety for this whole summer? If we can kind of just talk in general about the best way to overall... Well, I'd say you, you, use your common sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, pay attention to your environment, pay attention to your children when they're out there in the water. Somebody should be designated to be paying attention to them. Pay attention to yourself and your environment. If you're in a boat, make sure that who's ever driving the boat is not drinking and that you have a personal flotation device in the boat. Just, just good common sense and pay attention to your environment. Okay. You know, having that pool... If you have a backyard pool, make sure that it's, you have a secure fence with a latch. Clear the toys from the pool so children aren't um, attracted to it. And making sure that when you're inside the house, the child can't wander out and go back out the pool without you knowing about it. Okay. Now, speaking of that, what about some maybe summer safety as it relates to swimming lessons and getting well, people to Certainly, I encourage they swimming need lessons and make sure when you're in aerial swimming, if you have, a, if you know, ideally there would be a lifeguard. Lifeguards have been shown to, to save lives. Uh, the incidence of swimming in, in a beach or a pool, a public pool, where there is a lifeguard, definitely shows decrease in drowning deaths. So teach your okay. child to swim. All right. And then they can call Turbo and General Medical Center, as always, for more information about that uh, or the ER department and to get to go those yes, kinds sir. of things. Okay. Uh, and now speaking of that, for more information, you can always go to www.tgmc.com or you can go to TGMC's Facebook page or, as always, you can call 985 eight seven three four six one six and now we've got some other information Sean could we put up that other um, information up on the screen we want to let people know uh, when it comes to pool safety and, and being able to some simple steps to save lives and doing that safely uh, there's a number that you can go to you want to teach kids to swim Dr. Grossman addressed that a little bit earlier uh, it can always mean the difference between a close call and a call to uh, 911 you can always go to pool safely.gov so that's p o o l s a e f e l y.gov again that's pool safely.gov and so you can always contact them we want to make sure that if you've learned anything or you can always call Terrebonne General Medical Center and again that number is 8734616 or you can visit TGMC's Facebook page or you can go to www.tgmc.com. Uh, Dr. Grossman, I can't thank you enough. As the Director of Emergency Room Ser Services, you want to make sure that we don't see a lot of kids this summer. Well, it's a real tragedy when you see a child that's drowned or had a near drowning. And so really, we, it really is sad. So there's some really important information. We thank you so much for coming on to share it with us. Thank you, Keith. Very good. All right, that's going to do it for To Your Health with TGMC. Don't go anywhere. Sports is next. Hi, I'm Holly Dufresne, registered dietitian with the TGMC Healthy Lifestyle Center. 
Start small when starting a new routine. Focus on the healthy things you like and enjoy them. There are plenty of great tasting healthy food options. Take the time to explore, cook, and experiment with them.